This is motor yacht Susanna. She was built in 2002 for the then director of the Diamond Shipyard in Galati, Romania, according to a design by the world-renowned yacht design studio, Vripak. She has a steel hull and an aluminium superstructure and is powered by twin 100 horsepower Cummins engines. She is a CE Category A vessel with a length of 16.5 meters a beam of 4.8 meters and a draft of 1.5 meters. This trawler style explorer yacht is just as at home on inland waterways as she is on the open seas. Susanna has a load displacement of 48 tons, plus is fitted with coupe nautic stabilizers. In the 22 years since she was built, the engines have only notched up 2000 running hours, which is around 91 hours per season. The boat has been extremely well looked after by her current owners, who acquired her in 2015. Before I show you around, please take two seconds to subscribe to my channel. We've just hit 60,000 subscribers and I'd love to hit 100,000 subs by the end of the year. So here we are in the saloon over on the port side. We've got a U-shaped seating area. Lots of spacing here to sit down, relax and check out the size of these windows as well. As you can see, you're getting lots of natural light coming into this space. Just pan over onto the starboard side there, where we've got the entertainment system. Over here, recessed into the cabinetry, got quite a large TV. So if I sit over here and show you the view, as you can see, look, sit back, relax. You've got two big speakers over there, a really good entertainment system, and of course, that TV being the icing on the cake. Also, another thing that I want to show you in here as well, as you can see, we've got a central heating system uh, in here. Really, really efficient system. I mean, it is blowing quite a gale outside. It's cold, it's wet. You can't hear any of the wind and it feels nice and warm in here as well. So yeah, lots of cabinetry to stow all your stuff away in there. I'll pop open one of these, give you an idea of how much storage space you've got on board. The owners are actually living on board this boat at the moment, so it just goes to show that if you're looking for a genuine livable boat, then this is perfect. Another thing as well is you can individually control all of the areas in terms of the climate control. So if you want one part of the boat a little bit warmer than another part of the boat, uh, it's very easy to do uh, on board this particular vessel. Up in the galley, over here we've got the induction hob, uh, four ring induction hob, got a microwave oven on board this boat as well, which if I spin around and show you, now it's stowed away in here. So yeah, whether you wanna cook up something very quickly in the microwave, or whether you wanna set up your gourmet meal, it's very easy to do with all the appliances on here. But I like the fact as well, you got it over a split level. I think that's quite a nice touch. Coffee maker over there. And look, you can get all your herbs and spices up on this bulkhead as well. Before I take you down into the accommodation areas, show you around the engine room and the flybridge, let's head up into the pilot's house and take a look around in here. I love the setup up here. The fact over here on the port side, you've got your traditional charts. So if you want to do your traditional navigation using charts, then you can use this area for that. And if we look at all the equipment on here, you can see the controls for the fin stabilizers. Uh, the owners actually had this large monitor installed as well. So it's a multi-function display, uh, but not the traditional one you'd expect to find. Uh, the owner made this himself and it is just as efficient. You can get a feed from all the CCTV cameras on there. As you can see, look, if we look up on the brow, we've got multiple cameras all around the boat. And if you want to, you can have that relayed onto that display. Of course, this boat does have twin engines. I'll take you down into the engine room in a minute. I was really impressed when the owner took me around there. A lot of stuff in there that I didn't expect to see. And of course, I'll show you that in a minute. Behind the helm position, we have this seating area. You can quite easily get four or five people on there. So if I show you the view from here, look, we sit back and we get a great all round view. We've got a port access door onto the port side deck. 
as I pan around and show you over on the starboard side, we've got another access door that gives us easy access onto the starboard deck as well. So if you are operating this boat, as a current owner does, as an owner operator, it is very easy to handle. Touches like that make it very simplistic in terms of getting access to all the areas that you need to get to very quickly. And look, there's a drone there. I've not seen a drone like that before. Apparently it's a waterproof drone. So maybe something I need to invest in. Let's have a look at the helm control again. So over here on the left-hand side of the helm control, we've got the stop start buttons for the engines with the level indicators as well, temperature, pressure, voltage, fuel, and obviously RPM as well. And over here on the right-hand side of the helm position, throttle control levers, those twin engines, VHF radios over there, and also pilot as well. But yeah, let me take you down into the accommodation areas, starting with the forward cabin. Descend these stairs and turn right, so we're now facing the bow. And as you can see, in this cabin, we've got a double bed and we've also got twin singles as well. One on the port side and one over here on the starboard side. The TV on that bulkhead, if I pan over to the starboard side, just shut that door there. You can see we've got lots of space for all of your gear that you're going to be wanting to bring on board with you for those extended voyages. Let's shut that. It's a very, very cozy, very nice warm feel down here. Right, spin around over on the port side, got the entrance into the ensuite. Yeah, we've got the shower over here. Plenty of standing room in there. I could fit in there, but not have to crouch over. And I'm six foot four. Got the toilet there, obviously. Porthole over here, so you can open this up, get some fresh air in here if you want to. And the mirror, standard salute there, as you were. And storage under that double bed. And again, got another big radiator over here on this bulkhead, keeping everything nice and toasty and warm. Individual controls there, again, for the climate. So let's open this door, head aft. Shut that door behind me. You can see some more storage space over here on the starboard side. We take a step down into the master cabin, which is pretty much full beam, really. As you can see, you've got lots of space in here, lots of storage space to keep all of your stuff. Got two portholes. Again, these can open up so you can allow fresh air into here. Obviously, you can set your computer up there. It's got a working area here, almost like a mini office that you can put up a chair, check your emails, do whatever it is you need to do. And spin around. As you can see, this bulkhead is used for storage. Lots of hanging locker space in there and some more drawers underneath. I'm not going to open them up because, as I say, the owners are living on board at the moment. Over here on the port side, got another big radiator. Again, making sure this area is nice and warm and toasty, which it is. It's a real bliss being in here when the weather is like it is outside, that's for sure. Here we have the ensuite. Got two sinks there, his and her sinks. Another porthole over, over there that we can open up. Spin around, open this door, that leads in to the shower. Again, another decent sized shower there. Lots of headroom. Shut that door and come out here back into the owner's cabin and I'll show you as well look we've got some storage space underneath the bed as well that you can use over here as well so that's the accommodation area what I'm going to do now is take you in to the engine room another thing I want to say as well the owner's done a really good job the owner really is hands-on you know comes from a mechanical background and what he's done is fitted a lot of the stuff on here, including these LED strip lights, which I think give it a really nice touch. So let's go back up and I'll take you into the engine room. So access out onto the cockpit is via this sliding door here. We step outside into the windy and wet environment once more. As you see, a really nicely laid out cockpit here. We've got seating over on the starboard side. with some additional seating over here on the port side as well. Access gate that leads out onto the swim platform. There. One of the things that's unique about this boat, and I've never seen it before on a boat, but these basically allow 
the crane that's up on the flybridge to be used on the port quarter and you've got another one over here on the starboard quarter and it really does reflect the heritage of this boat because obviously you know the history about this boat already i doubt very much you'll find something like that on a similar boat the overhang as well i like the fact the overhang comes pretty much all the way back to the transom so if you want some protection from the elements especially on a day like today then obviously you get it right let's go into the engine room you can see you've got a big watertight door here proper commercial looking door with a high threshold as well let's enter into the engine room I say I was really impressed when I came down here it's not what I was expecting at all really because of the space the size of the space but also the use of the space as well so you can see we've got twin engines starboard engine over there and obviously the port engine over there we've got a workbench here so any minor repairs that need carrying out you can do them on this bench and both these engines have really good access as well as you see you can get into all of the essential components that you need to check when you're doing your daily maintenance task or your weekly maintenance task everything is really really accessible and these engines are in really good condition as well this boat really has been well looked after over here obviously we've got the uh, whisper generator some tanks over there on the port side the level indicator there they got more tanks over here on the starboard side as well and again, if we turn around, face aft, look, you see, we've got another workbench here as well. So you really can get those kind of basic maintenance tasks done, which when you're underway, is really handy to know that you're not gonna have to always go alongside when you need simple things done. Right, let's head aft now into the lazarette. Decent sized lazarette in here. Over on the port side, we've got the washer and the dryer. Over there on the starboard side, we have the Cabola system. This particular Cabola system is pretty much top of the range. It means that you get instant hot water as and when you need it. So you don't have to wait for hot water tanks to fill up before getting hot water. The KB40 over there will pretty much produce the hot water instantaneously. More refrigeration space over there. And look, over on the transom, you've got access to the steering. If you needed to, you can actually set up auxiliary manual steering on there as well, which is always good to know. Okay, let's spin around. Take a little seat on this bench, look. Great area. So when you actually are doing your laundry, you can sit on there, load up and unload the washer and the dryer. Okay, let's spin around. I'll show you as well, look, both these hatches open up. So say for example, if you need to replace a dryer or your washing machine, open up these hatches and you can take the stuff out. Uh, the owner was telling me actually that when they recently upgraded the Cabola system, uh, they used these deck hatches to bring in the new system along with the deck crane as well. Remember I showed you on the starboard and port quarter receptors for the deck crane. Uh, well, that's how they got the Cabola system in. Set up the crane there and Bob's your uncle. But yeah, let me know what you think of this engine room in the comments. I was really impressed by the use of space down here. And as I say, just how accessible everything is along with the ease of maintenance, thanks in part to your workbenches down here. Right, let's spin around, head back up into the cockpit. Hopefully it stopped raining because this DJI camera is not waterproof. I don't really want to get this wet. Obviously we've got the overhang that's protecting us from the elements, but the wind has been howling, so the rain has been coming in pretty much horizontally. But look, we've got a little bit of blue sky, so let's make the most of it. We've got a port and starboard side deck, so you can walk around the entire deck again. Really good things to know when you're operating this boat as an owner operator. Nice high bulwarks, all the way up to your waist. Got a side access gate over here. There's another one on the starboard side as well. Come up these couple of steps, see the port access door into the pilot house. And as we move forward, we find the Portuguese bridge. Really nice look and feel. I love Portuguese bridges, I always have done. Got some freestanding modular furniture at the moment on the bow. 
So you can set these up pretty much how you want. Deck gear over here. And forward, we've got the hatch that leads down into the chain locker. That actually also acts as a crash compartment, a crash bulkhead as well down there. This boat really is all about safety and redundancy and long distance voyaging. And check out the windows onto that wheelhouse as well. Big old radar arch, your Simrad radar up there. Big searchlight, all your aerials. CCTV camera up there as well. Let's head back aft along the starboard side deck so you get a really good feel for this boat and how it's laid out. I'm gonna take you up onto the flybridge now. Under there, you find the filler caps and there we have the starboard access gate as well. But I can walk down here with ease without having to sort of pivot and twist around. And you can see any water that comes on the deck if you're plowing through the big seas will quickly wash over the side as well. Next, let me take you up onto the flybridge so we can have a look around up there. Here we go, this by magic I've appeared up on the flybridge. Hopefully you can still hear me, I'm gonna have to battle against the wind. I have got my little bit of fur on top of my microphone, so hopefully the wind won't drown out my voice. As you see, you've got some solar panels up there. The owner was telling me that in the summer, when the summer does decide to come, you can pretty much operate the hotel load on this boat just on these solar panels alone. So it's a really, really handy feature for a true livable boat. Obviously you've got the controls here, uh, engine controls, throttle levers over there on the starboard side, control for the rudder, amidships, and a handy little grab handle there as well. We spin around, I'll show you the boat deck. So as you can see, we've got two cranes on here. We've got a port crane there. Obviously we've got a starboard crane over there. So yeah, these can be relocated if you wanted them to be down onto the port and starboard quarter of the cockpit. Again, I mean, that's a feature that I've not seen before on a boat. Uh, let me know if you have. But yeah, you can easily get two tenders up here and they can be launched either on the starboard side or on the port side. Yeah, check out that wind. Okay, spin around. Let's show you that radar arch. See, you've got a spotlight there as well. One facing forward uh, and one facing aft. Susanna has a cruising speed of 6.5 knots with a top speed of 9.5 knots. When motoring at her cruising speed, then you can expect a range of just under 2,000 nautical miles, depending of course on load and conditions. She also has an electric 20 horsepower bow thruster that was upgraded in 2020. At the time of making and uploading this video, Susanna is currently listed for sale. For more information, head to the video description or the link pinned in the comments. I would like to say a big thank you to the owners for inviting me on board and for cooking me some lovely dinner before I left. I really appreciate it. And remember, if you have got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my channel, then feel free to get in contact with me. You will find all of my contact details on my micro site and I will pin a link to the site in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you check out the video that I made about this arm trawler Delfino 65. And make sure you check out the yacht tour video that I made about this arm trawler 1680. You can find the relevant links in the video description. A big thank you to my channel members for helping to support my channel. If you'd like to join them by becoming a member, then click on the link pinned in the comments or on the link in the video description. And for anything nautical related, including some of my top playlists, then be sure to check out my micro site. I'm guessing by now you probably know where I've left the link, but have a look at it and let me know what you think of it in the comments below.